It's Bob and Tom Tonight, starring Chick McGee, Christy Lee, Josh Arnold, Ace Cosby, Pat Godwin, Willie Griswold, and Tom Griswold. Tom, we have a special guest. We do indeed. And uh, Ms. Alsman's already said how handsome he is. Comedian Charlie Barron joins us. Hey, Charlie, how are you, sir? Yeah, I mean, I'm doing good. I got called uh, handsome, and I didn't even shower today, so I'm feeling I'm feeling real good about myself. <laughs> yeah, or was, yesterday, actually. Uh, yeah, she so. was talking about your powerful eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes they get a little red, but uh, it's not the uh, it's not what you're thinking. Uh, actually, when I was in math class uh, in high school, my teacher told me I looked very patriotic because my eyes were red, white, and blue. And I did not happen to be stoned on, on that day or any day in high school if mom could. Uh, now, I, I just watched a couple of weeks ago, I watched your video in which you were learning to luge. Oh, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> that looked incredibly dangerous. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, so here's the thing. I know it looks incredibly dangerous, um, and that's because it absolutely is. I mean, they, they, it, it, they took a sled and they put skates on it, and then uh, and then they said you can go down. And, uh, you know, I'm not good with, with driving things, generally speaking, but, it's, it, you know, you have this thing with no steering wheel. The only way you steer is you move your head a little bit, and just a little bit. And if you do it too much, uh, you hit the wall at 40 miles an hour. Mm. And that's exactly what I did. But oh. I'll, I'll say this last thing. It's good to hit the wall at 40 miles an hour. Otherwise, you're going to pick up too much speed and then hit the wall at 60 <laughs> miles an hour. So and I you, did it right. You were all mic'd up and uh, a camera up. It's a great video, and I know you've got a lot of terrific videos out there, and people have been following you for a long time. And you're on tour. I will point this out. Wise Guys Comedy Club in Salt Lake coming up Thursday. Then it's Denver, Boston, Portsmouth, Kansas City, Helium in St. Louis, Helium in Indy. Then you're going to be at the Waverly Beach. Is it pronounced Menasha, Wisconsin? Oh, yeah, Menasha, Wisconsin, right up off Lake Winnebago up there. Good yeah. uh, good walleyes in that lake. Okay, good. And smoking. then uh, Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Iowa, Fargo, North Dakota, Grand Rapids, a lot of places where we are. Speaking of fishing, I was also watching. We were talking about the mayor of Hudson, Ohio, and his uh, speculation that if they put shanties on the lake up there, it would cause prostitution. Right. You got a nice yeah. video on that as well. Yeah, you know, and, and I saw that, you know, and, and he he resigned, which I don't understand because politics these days, you say something 100 percent inaccurate. You just stay in uh, office for another decade. But that's how they do it at, on the congressional level. But, uh, you know, he resigned, which was kind of a bummer. But, yeah, he was talking about uh, the prostitution <laughs> in ice shanties. And, uh, you know, first he says. What's going to happen if you put up more ice shanties? And the obvious answer is you catch more fish. Sure. Because you're not freezing your teeth are off. You know, you get more walleyes, perch, crappies, eaters, groceries. But then then he takes this leap of logic that, you know, I, I, I don't think uh, is is uh, is appropriate. Then says you can bring prostitutes out into these ice shanties. And I'm not aware of any prostitutes that have, you know, <laughs> rat traps on their high heels. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, when, when you do your stand-up show, oh, let me, I guess I'll rephrase this. Did you start as a stand-up and segue into all the videos <clears throat> and the various, and the character, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, so I started doing, I was in the news business for a while, and then uh, I was doing this red carpet reporting stuff, and I, I was really bad at that because I had this thing called facial dysmorphia where I, I have a hard time telling the difference between faces because I didn't do any research. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I started doing stand-up at night to kind of keep myself sane and one of the characters i developed was this guy in local news who instead of taking everything that people said was wrong about him like you know uh the accent and i i call like a water fountain a bubbler you know even though that's a smoking device everywhere else that's yeah. what we call milwaukee a bubbler so anyway i took all these things that people says that was, that was wrong about me and i put them into this character that did well at the clubs when all my other content bombed. So I made a video out of it. And uh, that video then took off. So I've been doing it ever since then. So is the stand-up primarily uh, the character? Or do you Are you in there as yourself too? 
Yo, oh no, it's mostly myself, but you know, uh, it's it, I kind of go into certain character bits, I, I guess, during it. Like I'll do a, a live Mandawak minute. You know, I, I'll grab the headlines from uh, around the area I'm playing, and uh, you know, kind of riff on them. And uh, oh, that's fun. And and then it's just straight stand up. Aside for that, are you are you drinking out of a pickle jar? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, <laughs> kosher, you know. But the thing about pickle jars is they're the best uh, drinking jars uh, for water because they're the they're the biggest ones. I actually buy these specifically because I uh, uh, I want a matching set eventually. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. That's classy. <laughs> yeah. Have a fancy company so over I pull out the, the butter pickle jar on so they know that I I planned it out that way. Yes. When you're on stage, do you, uh, when you started, were you kind of dressing up and wearing a coat and tie? And have you segued into kind of hunting gear? What do you do now? Yeah. Uh, well, when I first started, oh, oh you're, you're saying like from the news business that wear coat and tie or when I was yeah. doing the man's walk minute bit? Well, yeah. Doing- yeah, I did. I did uh, local news, uh, uh, coat and tie. And then, and then my man's walk main character needed, you know, his. I want him to be like the Edward R. Murrow of the Midwest. So I got a nice duck camo jacket. That's my great uncle Heine's jacket. Stole it from my dad uh, back in the mid 2000s to do some duck hunting down in South Carolina when I lived down there. And I swore to him I didn't uh, I didn't uh, take it. And he was mad about it. I said, I, I don't know, talk to Andy, that's my brother. And then this video goes viral and I really screwed the pooch. So, uh, yeah, but uh, no, when I'm on stage, I'm just in uh, your normal uh, street attire. You know, I actually didn't know I was going to be on video this morning. Otherwise, I would have. Uh, ju- well, this is this is my church, my Sunday's best. So I guess I did OK. But- <laughs> it's a camo jacket. Uh, uh, it looks like you're about to go about to go hunting. Charlie Barron's is our guest. And it's interesting because I've, I've often said that when I travel, I'll notice that um, all of the newscasters sound like me. They, they, they're real flat accent, which for better yeah. for better or for worse, I have what would be considered American broadcast English accent. You embrace the fact that you have kind of this Milwaukee thing going, which is sort of not the thing that they want to see on television news. Well, no, not at all. Actually, I mean, that's part of the inspiration. I, I got told I can't do voiceover at this one place because I, I had too much of an accent. You know, and I says to him, that's just, that's just BS. You know, <laughs> you know these guys I, I know what you're talking really about. really screwing the pooch here right now because I got, I got a, a, a voice of butter. Okay. It's, <laughs> like, hey, you, and it's the real butter. It's not, I can't believe it's not butter. That's some, it's from Wisconsin cow kind of butter. <laughs> have you ever uh, milked a cow? You guys ever pulled the teat or no? Oh yeah. No, no, I never have. At, no. at the state fair, sure. Yeah, well, it's it's an experience, and I I've done that with a, a cow and a goat. So how about that? Well, yeah. yeah, that is the hardest work you will ever do. And every time you take a pat of butter, you're gonna say, "God bless the great dairy farmers of this country." That is hard work. Amen to that, Charlie. Great talking to you once again. On tour, Salt Lake City, Denver, all coming up. Then it's an East Coast swing: Boston, Portsmouth, and then Kansas City and St. Louis, Indy, Menasha, Wisconsin, Cedar Rapids, and uh, Grand Rapids, and uh, lastly the Fargo theater in Fargo, North Dakota, all coming up and we'll link to these great videos. They're terrific and congratulations on not killing yourself while losing. I couldn't hey, believe you did you. it. How, let me ask you, did you, I, I heard at one point in the, in the video they say, this is where the women take off. Did you start from there or did you start even lower? No, where the 12 year olds take off and I can't believe they let 12 year olds go down that thing. They probably weigh less than me so the gravitational pull will not get them cooking 40 so quick, but <laughs> Yeah, it was it was intense. I recommend it to all of you. If if you want to have uh, nerve damage in this part of your arm, <laughs> give her a go. Thanks, Charlie. Great talking to you, Charlie Barons. Thank you, guys. And, and it's a B E R E N S. Check out Charlie's videos; they're very very funny. We got to get some music out of Mr. Godwin. Here. I'm ready to sing. Okay, maybe uh, a love song because Tom, we love you. Oh, love that's so know? sweet. Thank you very much. Speak for yourself. <laughs> we love. What's you. it called? Lighthouse, right? Lighthouse. Sure, that was uh, the wedding song. Everybody got yeah. divorced too. Yes, yeah. so that's the one you played at weddings. And they all about got 25. Divorced. They all got divorced. Yeah, I'm not allowed to play it or sing at the reception. 
Did you play it at any of your weddings? No, no, no. <laughs> Mine were done very quickly. <laughs> Out of necessity. <laughs> Did you ever perform at any of your weddings, Pat? No. Never? No. They were done at the, the courthouse? I'm going to do yeah, a Apparently, huh? how'd you do in the honeymoon? <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. Oh, you did perform there. Okay. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you used to throw it out, did you? I used to have a good time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I remember. I have a memory. Gatorade in the bed stand. Get sure. those electrolytes back in. <laughs> your peanut butter. Get your energy up. Gatorade on the bed stand. That, that's, that should be the name of a, a joke band. <laughs> Can you imagine? Right afterwards, just throwing it in her face. <laughs> You're a winner. <laughs> hey. Okay. Alzi, I'm going to do this story. I, I didn't print this. Uh, sorry. Um, but uh, this is such a bizarre story. I heard this over the weekend. Um, th I, I dug it up on something called Sky News. Headline, man reunited with his dentures 11 years after he vomited them into a trash can. <laughs> oh. They made their way back to him. Here huh? we go. A guy named Paul Bishop was having what he termed a drunken day out with the lads. <laughs> while vacationing in Spain in 2011. It's a British guy saying lads like that? Yeah, I don't he's got to be British. Uh, he goes, uh, I'm just, yeah, he goes, he goes, I'd had enough lager, so I got a pint of cider. Uh, but then the other lads were ready to go, so I downed the last of my pint and thought, oh, no, it's coming back up. Oh, no. Oh. After vomiting into a trash can, he went to another bar with his buddies, and one of his friends said, hey, man, your teeth are missing. <laughs> he spent the rest of his vacation without his teeth. When he got back to the UK, he shelled out for a new set. Mm -hmm. He's now 63. He received a package containing his long lost dentures, which were in perfect condition. How the hell? It says they'd been tracked down through a DNA database. What? Whoa. His address was obtained through the British Embassy. What? How wild. Who would go to that much trouble? Do they have to, what, scrape the... What you do, find teeth and go, I'm going to send this to get DNA yeah. results so they get their teeth back? Like Amazing. And let's, let's go back a couple steps. Have you ever been so drunk if you barfed your teeth out you wouldn't notice? Boy, that's the thing, isn't it? Hmm. I've been so drunk that I barfed on myself and didn't notice. I've yeah. definitely gone back into a party. Hey, buddy, you want to change shirts? You got a little puke on your collar there. Oh, uh, yeah. really? <laughs> you never having too much fun there, Josh? Come no. on. Oh, but yes, yes, but... Uh... Now, wait a minute. Uh, Pat, once yes. again, uh, little no. peaches and herb. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was drunk and puked my teeth in the bin. <laughs> Me minus dentures is an ugly <laughs> grin. <laughs> I'll have to buy new ones. That's a lot of cash. I realized they were gone forever in the trash. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I spent the morning being called a Luther. <laughs> wife says I'm a fool cause I lost my twofers oh. 11 years to the day thanks to my DNA I opened up the mail and my dentures were there hey hey <laughs> <laughs> reunited and the bite is right <laughs> reunited and they feel so tight there's one perfect fit and choppers, you are it. Oh, the mail expedited, and we're reunited. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, we're oh, back, baby. Nice. That's some uh, that's some real detective work to find out who those belong to. Okay, that must have been a real first of all. Shoe. If you look at a picture of this guy, <laughs> can you imagine if I had stepped on his joke like that? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'd you be were... fired. <laughs> I didn't know. Go, what was your joke? I didn't hear. Go ahead. Sorry, I was it's reading. Gumshoe. Gums. <laughs> Takes a lot of gum detective shoe. work to find those gum. teeth, Tom. <laughs> gum. It's gum. very good. Okay, now, uh, sitting in for Christy Lee, it's Jessica Alsman on her way to Vegas. Yeah, first timer. Your first time in Vegas. Mm hmm. Uh, have you checked out to see what shows are still up and running these days? Oh, there's the Carrot Top and Penn and Teller. <laughs> Those are both great shows. I think there's a Donny Osmond. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know about Donny, but Penn and Teller are stellar. And and then there's the Cirque. Was it Cirque du Soleil? Those or... are great. Yeah. So I don't know if we're gonna go to any though. Yeah. What? Yeah. Do the shows. Do the food. Do the pot stuff. Everybody in Vegas, you go there and it's too much of the gambling and the booze gets you. Because you can be on the floor, you can drink for free. When you go to Vegas, you got to do the food stuff, you got to do the entertainment stuff. There's so much more than just gambling and booze. 
Oh, I'll do the booze. What do you write for? You you write for vague travel adventures? (laughs) No, I went to Vegas. You know, when you go to uh, New York City, you should really try the food. Oh, I'm going to kill you. Maybe maybe, maybe look at a building. No. And um, you know what? You know what? You should should sleep at some point. Oh, I hate you so much, you fat bastard. No, what I'm saying is... No, when you when I went, I was 21, and all I wanted to do was gamble and drink, and I lost all my money immediately. My sister had well, to buy me a flight out early. It was messy. I tried to tell I tried so, to tell you, Willie. What what did I tell you? What uh, you take what you lose the first night. Yep. Next day you double it and bet all that, and you're right back in the green again, man, or, or the black. Hey, if you ever yeah. get a cabin on the woods, check out the scenery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like at night, yeah. is it better? Or yeah. you know what yeah. I meant. And if you fly there, look out at the, at the sky. Oh. <laughs> you don't you just sit in the plane and drink. A, oh, bitch. <laughs> those, all those three all those... shows that you mentioned are all great. Carrot, Carrot Top, I don't care what you say, is Funny. hilarious. He is hilarious, yeah. Just, I would love to see him. He's great. That his show is his show is amazing. What kind of tattoo do you have there? A carrot top tattoo? Oh no, I was just because he's a very strong man. I was showing, I was showing my yeah, mother. Oh, I sorry. wish that was carrot tops just face on your bicep. Like <laughs> that'd be amazing. Yeah, if I had a carrot top tattoo, I'll get one. I'll get one on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got this. Uh, got this nice. Uh, if you were listening a few minutes ago, you heard a particular story. You'll understand why I'm reading this. Uh, my pal was living in a rental property in the Quad Cities. He thought his teenage boy had plugged up the toilet, so we had to disassemble it to remove the clog. Oh. Inside it, a pair of dentures. Oh. He'd lived in the house for over four years. Mm. Still in there. Yeah, a- yeah, I hope you don't return those. There you go. No. Be careful about that, Tom. That'll bite you in the ass. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very nice. That's it. Watch the entire show live or on demand at bobandtom.com or listen live with the Bob and Tom app. And be sure to tune in next time for more Bob and Tom Tonight.